Kai, thanks for joining me. So um, today I'm going to do a pickups video. Uh, I got some stuff to show off here. I'm doing this about every three weeks now, I guess. So um, I'm right in in time here. Um, and not a lot of import stuff, but I'm just going to talk about a few things I got. Uh, to start off with, though, I actually wanted to just mention some anime that I've been watching. Just put in a plug for Attack on Titan. Uh, if you guys like anime and you haven't started watching Attack on Titan, I would definitely recommend it, even if you just check out the first episode, that's pretty much going to decide it right there for you if you want to keep watching or not. Uh, it's so intense, really dramatic. Um, it's not really like those other like shonen shows, although it has kind of a shonen vibe to it. Um, it's it's really gritty and interesting, and um, I would I would recommend you guys take a look at it if you haven't. The first season just ended, and it was it was a kind of long season, kind of like how seasons used to normally be, uh, and it was very good. Uh, additionally, there was one of those like new short 12 episode seasons of uh, Watamote was kind of my my surprise sleeper hit from last season. Um, it's short for <laughs> Watashi ga motenai no wa. Uh, which is basically, um, no matter how I think about it, uh, it's your guy's fault that I'm not popular. And uh, it's about this really like awkward, shy, uh, introverted high school girl. She she just starts you know her first year in high school, and um, she just can't socialize with anyone. And it's just it's so kind of charming and painful to watch at the same time. Uh, it was really excellent. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and lastly, there's a new uh, show coming out this season. Uh, I just watched the first episode of last night. I just wanted to mention um, this because the premise is so funny. This uh, this guy gets a job um, basically for being a huge otaku, you know, just like complete anime, video game, everything geek. And it turns out that he's an ambassador to another world where he's going to be uh, promoting Japan's uh, otaku culture to, like, this this anime, like, fantasy anime setting. Um, it's just, it was really a funny premise, and the first episode was quite good, so really curious to see where that one goes. But uh, anyway, um, some stuff I got here. I've got um, Final Fantasy XII. This is uh, Revenant Wings on the DS. Um, I haven't played this. You can see it's still in the shrink wrap. Um, I actually found this in a box of stuff that I had set aside to throw out, essentially. Because um, I was thinking, I'm like, man, I thought I ordered that game, and then, like, they never sent it to me. Um, really interested to check this out, though. You know, I, I liked 12. I didn't like the characters so much, and, you know, here they are back again. So uh, we'll see how this is, but um, you know, I figured, heck, an interesting-looking Final Fantasy game on the DS. I might as well uh, give that a whirl. Um, and some of the stuff that I got is also just kind of, I got deals this time. It was so weird. Um, I got really lucky with some stuff. So my first thing is uh, I, I was having a really bad day, so I went to Goodwill. I just happened to be in the area, and I was like, you know, I'll just stop in and see if there's anything there, and, you know, just uh, you know, might as well. Um, so I ran across, this is a Greatest Hits version, but uh, Final Fantasy VII. And I actually don't have this game. I never played it back in the day. I mentioned that in my, um, you know, Why Square is Not Remaking Final Fantasy VII uh, video. Uh, and I figured, gosh, you know, I normally, in all honesty, this sort of thing I leave for other people, you know? I'm just like, I'm, I'm not going to buy a game just to, like, resell it for profit or just something ridiculous like that. But this was six bucks, and I just couldn't pass it up, you know? I was having one of those days, and I'm like, you know, this this really cheered me up. So six dollars for a uh, greatest hitch version of Final Fantasy VII. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, additionally, I guess another Goodwill find... Um, and I stopped by another time. This was like a couple weeks later, probably. And uh, they had some game systems. Now, this is a place where they've had game systems before, and they were overpriced for what I wanted to pay. Um, but they had a PlayStation 2. Uh, just the system, with no cords or controllers or anything, f excuse me, for 8 bucks. And it was missing the expansion bay. So I went ahead and ordered one of these on eBay. I'd, I'll look up how much it was, but it was like, you know, a couple bucks or something. It wasn't any big deal. So I got that. Uh, I got the system, which is fully working. And um, they did have two controllers separately marked $3 each. And they had a memory card separately for, I think it was 2 bucks, 
something like that. So uh, for basically like 15 bucks plus the price of this expansion thing, I got a fully working uh, PlayStation 2 system. So again, it was just one of those things where normally I would kind of leave that sort of thing. There actually was um, an Atari there that I left. There was a... I think a GameCube that I left. I'm not just vacuuming these things up, you know, when I see them. But that PS2, I just I couldn't leave sitting there. I thought that was a pretty awesome deal. Um, additionally, uh, hardware related, I picked up a Game Genie for the uh, the Sega Genesis. Now I've been on a Genesis kick here because I picked up those Genesis systems to restore. So I figured, you know, if I have this Game Genie, I'll be able to play any Japanese uh, import games that I might decide to pick up because you can just plug them in here without having to like physically modify your your port at all. Um, I probably would have gone the other route, except that these are really cheap. This was like ten bucks, so I couldn't really pass that up. So now to the I guess the main game that I picked up this time um, were our Sega games, uh, the Genesis uh, Genesis games here. I'll start with the one you guys have probably already seen, Robocop vs. Terminator. This is another one of those ones that I wouldn't have normally gotten. Um, this is something that the internet uh, alerted me to. And uh, come to find out, this just, it looked like such a cool, just side-scrolling action game. I mean, heck, you know, like Robocop and Terminator. I mean, I like both of those things, especially Robocop. And, um... It's just not the kind of thing even back in the day I would have thought was a good game, just because all those movie-licensed games and stuff, they just all seemed so crummy and bad. Um, but this one is it's fun. It's fun to play. It's it's uh, you know the graphics are pretty cool and it's really violent. And I mean it's it's RoboCop and Terminator. So um, happy to have that one. Uh, additionally, um, this is another one that I just sort of ran across online, and it looked so cool. I was looking up uh, Data East to just see what kind of stuff that they had done, and I ran across Atomic Runner. Now, this is one that I got a really good deal on. Um, it seems like a lot of these games, they're getting a bit more collectible. Um, I think retro collecting has... You know, got, it's gotten pretty popular recently, and eBay's, you know, it's it, prices are going up. They're not, it's not super drastic, but on some things, you know, it's it's climbing. So this, you can see, it looks a little faded, maybe, you know, um, and this doesn't have the manual. But I picked this up for six dollars, and that was um, like with shipping. Okay, so for six bucks with shipping, um, this totally it works. I had to clean it up, but. Uh, you know, Atomic Runner, I thought that was a pretty good deal. And this is a cool game. Uh, it's hard, um, but fun. I actually really enjoy it. Next up is something I wanted back in the day. Um, this is Dragon's Revenge. And I just remember seeing this. I thought the style of it looked really neat. And I don't know, when you're a kid, um, you know, I was probably 14 years old or something like that. I mean, it just, uh, the whole Devil's Crush, like Dragon's Crush games, I remember seeing those in magazines. And I just thought it was such a neat aesthetic. And, of course, the Aliens movies I started to get into uh, around that time, maybe, maybe you know, 15, 16. And I thought those were really neat. So, um, anyway, definitely uh, some, some cool stuff. So I, I checked this out. Uh, I didn't realize that the um, there's another version of this. I forget what it is. I'll maybe put it up here, Dragon something, um, which actually is like a remake of Devil's Crush. So I want to pick that up. But this one um, is a pinball game <laughs> with like kind of weird fantasy elements to it. Uh, I actually enjoyed enjoyed playing it. It's pretty uh, nifty. Uh, next is uh, something else you guys may have seen in my other videos, Burning Force. And pretty much, you know, I like those anime style games and I'm like, you know, I'd like to collect that kind of, of stuff. So here's a Namco uh, game where it's kind of... Uh, it's like Space Harrier-esque, uh, um, but you've got this, like, this woman rides on this, uh, like, hover bike kind of a thing. It's sort of got that Akira slash Space Harrier feeling to it, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's it's pretty fun, though. Um, I actually was able to get quite far in that. Um, the, the difficulty is not super bad, so uh, I thought that that was a pretty... Uh, neat game to try out. And lastly, this is my, my super deal of the Sega Genesis games. I took a big chance on this. I don't know, like, exactly why, but I've been looking for uh, this game called Troubleshooter. Um, it has a real Dirty Pair sort of feel to it, and it is a shooter. It's like a side-scrolling shooter, but the characters, like the sprites, are sort of big and cartoony, and it's interesting. But um, this is one of those games that was going for 
20, 25 bucks, maybe a couple of years ago, and now it's like creeped up and creeped up, and it seems like a lot of times, you know, it's going for 40, it's going for 50, um, that sort of a thing. Um, a troubleshooter here. And the amazing thing is, I saw this pop up on half.com, and you know, it was from a seller, I checked their feedback, and they did not have perfect scores, they'd had people giving them negatives, you know, in, in the recent past, um, and this game, they didn't give information, normally I will only purchase a game from somebody who's like, you know, it has everything, it's got the manual, it's got the artwork, you know, they need to be really specific, otherwise I'm going to assume that they're just putting like, oh yeah, it's very good condition, card only, you know, uh, even when they don't say card only. But for some reason I saw this, and it was 13 bucks, you know, before shipping, and I just ordered it, you know. All they said was like, I don't know, has the essentials or something. What does that even mean, you know? I don't know why I, why I even took a chance on it. But uh, I figured, you know, even if it's the cart only for like 15 bucks, I've just, I've wanted it for so long, I just wanted to take a chance that this paid off. This is like, it's complete, you know? It's got like the registration card in it. It's got the manual and the game. It's all in like perfect shape. I mean, the, the, you got just a little bit of wear along the bottom of there where the, the artwork like sneaked out of the bottom just a little bit, but, I mean, this is beautiful. So, um, just, you know, I think between that and that copy of Final Fantasy, I think the universe is just, it's given me a break here this, this month. I don't know. Um, I just feel like I got, actually got some really lucky, uh, finds. So, um, really happy about that. Uh, additionally, um, just a little bit of printed material here. So, um, I, I don't know. I was at, um, this place where I buy uh, used games, and they had these Sega Vision uh, magazines. There's just a couple of them here. And uh, when I saw this, I was hit by such nostalgia. Um, I think I used to have these magazines. I don't, you know, I don't remember specifically, but when I saw it, I was like, that looks so familiar. Um, and this is just the perfect era, too. We're talking Genesis, Game Gear, and Sega CD, you know? This is like when I was gaming um, these these systems. And um, there's just something nostalgic about holding these old magazines and flipping through them and just kind of seeing, like, what people were really saying about um, games, you know, that were contemporary at the time when these when these weren't retro. Um, and it's, it's just nifty. So uh, I haven't actually read these a whole bunch. Uh, I got this one... This one here, which is like a Sega Sports and a bunch of stuff, um, but they're just uh, they're just going to be so fun to to page through. I'm pretty sure I had this one. I just I feel like this is one that I used to own. Um, so there it is, four four copies of Sega Visions. These cover like 1993, 1994, around in in that range. Um, and it was funny too because I was up there and the guy was like. You know what? We're having a sale. Buy four, get two magazines free. Cause he's like, we just don't normally sell magazines. They don't normally take them back. But um, he said, you know, they probably came with a with a you know some other stuff, and so they went ahead and took them. So he just gave me these ones for free. We've got this Game Pro. I actually almost bought these anyway. They were, they were like a couple bucks. Um, it's got a Resident Evil 2 strategy guide. I, in fact, I mean, I'm, I usually don't pass that kind of stuff up. Any any Resident Evil guides, normally I just snatch up, even if it's in a magazine. So. Um, you know, check this out, like, Mega Man X, you know, um, just super cool old, um, classic stuff, so very nostalgic for me getting a couple of these. I don't intend to, like, collect these old magazines, really, but just if I see a couple issues here and there, just for, you know, old time's sake, it's, it's pretty fun to check out. And lastly... Uh, we have the one import from Japan. More welcome to Pia Carrot stuff. I can't help it. Um, we have uh, Pia Keroto Yokoso 2. Um, this is the visual fan book. Um, but you've got a poster here. And, um, you know, these games are just fun. I don't really know how to describe them to people that haven't played them or don't play these kind of games. Um, but they're just, you know, they're like these romance stories. Um, you get to know these various characters and um, you know, it's like these people all work at a at a cafe or at a restaurant and you get to know them um, and uh, 
you know, trigger different different events with them. You can you go on like a company trip and stuff like that, or get to know like what their hobbies are, and you know, go. You sometimes can go to various locations if you kind of know the sort of stuff they like to do, and um, it's they're just really uh, sweet. They have like nice nice stories and nice characters, um, and they can just be a lot of fun. Um, you know, this kind of book, you know, just has a lot of, this is like sheet music and the, like, frames of the animation. Um, here you've got the, uh, all of the events. Here they just have illustrations, you know, they're, they're pretty. All the, uh, like the character artwork and stuff. Um, just a cool thing. And actually, th these are really neat too. They have uh, interviews here with like the the voice cast and the the creators of the game. Uh, I'd really like to translate these and um, just kind of hear hear what they're saying. The the people that actually made this stuff, what they're what they're talking about in the game. Because um, I just think these games are really fun. So that is it. Um, this is a little long, but I think I'll put it up the way it is. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, hopefully you'll join me again next time for some more video game related videos.